All right. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Harmoning, president of the Burnsville Chamber of Commerce. I'm here today with Ethan Hellyer from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank my partners. This is a part of our Real-Time Solutions webinar series. And uh, this is done in partnership with the Apple Valley, Burnsville, Hastings, Lakeville, and River Heights Chambers of Commerce. And uh, this is sort of a pop-up webinar here because of the passing of the American Rescue Plan. And we wanna dig into that a little bit and understand its impact on business. I also wanna give another thank you to our sponsor for this series, XL Energy. I'm gonna play a quick commercial from them and then we'll get going. At Excel Energy, we're going carbon free by 2050. We'll use the energy of the wind and the sun but other things too, all kinds of energy, all the energy, belief, possibility, and you. Your energy supercharged by a bajillion, million, zillion volts of optimism. You, us, together, for a carbon-free future. Thank you for the glowing spirit. Sorry about that. So thank you to our sponsor, XL Energy Center, XL Energy. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Ethan Hellier for our uh, presentation here. Thanks. And uh, thanks again for having me. I think this is the second or third time um, I've been with your group and it's always a, it's always a good one to be with. Um, I like being with the South Metro. I live here in the South Metro in Prior Lake. I think I've said that probably three times now, but that's okay. I, it's fun to be with my people. Anyways, um, I'll get started here. I'll talk a little bit about the uh, American Rescue Plan. I'm not gonna talk too long because I think we can probably get into some questions um, and we can kind of go back and cover again things that I had covered briefly and you know we can kind of go from there. Um, I do want to say last time I was with you guys, I was a little more pessimistic on the overall look of the economy, kind of where we were, you know, where we were going cases were rising, things looked murky. Um, I still think some things look a little bit murky. We just uh, put out a survey uh, for the first quarter of the year, um, which just came back and we published it. Um, businesses, uh, obviously I'm, you know, I'm speaking to you folks and you have a better idea, but you're still hesitant of what's going on. You feel like it's gonna be a six month plus process to really kind of feel back, get back to normal. 90 plus percent of you say that it's still you know, the pandemic is weighing on your business practices and things you're doing. Um, and, you know, we definitely see that when we look at, you know, businesses that are doing well now and ones that aren't doing well or, you know, not doing as well. That said, you know, vaccines are, you know, being rolled out at a quicker pace, doing about two and a half million a day. So I, and just an anecdotal uh, sort of, you know, experience past weekend, I was down in Phoenix for a wedding happened to look online, it was the busiest travel weekend in the last year. So I, you know, people are getting vaccinated, they're feeling more comfortable. And I, I do think that timeline is gonna speed up and I do think that we are on the right track. So talk a little bit about the uh, American Rescue Plan. This is the restaurant revitalization program. This is, this is kind of the big ticket item in here. This is what I think what people are wanting to learn more about. And what's nice about this, and if you do qualify, and that's if you're a bar or a restaurant, um, we do have questions about country clubs since they have a membership base don't know um, if they qualify trying to get SBA to be a little more clear. I think of you know brackets country club in Lakeville or the horse and hunt club here in Prior Lake, you know they, they, they might want to tap into something like that but we got to figure out if they're going to qualify for that. <clears throat> Anyways, what's nice about this program it's it's going to be uh, ran through the SBA because uh, it's a grant program you don't have to go through your lender. The grants are capped at $5 million per restaurant or $10 million if you own multiple units. Um, and figuring out what you qualify for is very simple. You're gonna look at your total sales from 2019 and 2020, subtract those with the idea being that you had better sales in 2019 than you did in 2020. And that'll be your grant amount. Um, <clears throat> you can get a PPP loan. In fact, if you're waiting, if you qualify for this and you're waiting for it, I would still try to get a PPP loan because uh, you can get that and then get this fund. That being said, if you get your PPP loan amount on this application, you'll write in how much you've got and they'll just subtract that. But, um, and the reason why I suggest if you 
want to get a PPP loan and you're trying to get in this grant program as well to get that is because PPP is up and running right now. This fund is still not running yet. Um, so you probably get your money quicker if you go the PPP route. And if we have PPP questions, we can certainly get to that as well. If you plan on applying for this grant, you're going to want to get a DUNS number um, and then a, a, a SAM number. If you just do a quick Google on that, you'll be able to find that. DUNS is through a private enterprise and, and, and the SAM number is a, a government run number. And I just from heard from multiple folks, I don't know if this is official, but they highly recommend getting those numbers. It'll make the application process go much quicker for you. Uh, if you have 20 or more uh, locations or units, you do not qualify. And if you're a publicly traded restaurant, you don't qualify as well. Um, <clears throat> similar to PPP, the grant money is really supposed to go toward like operation costs, paying workers, you know, sort of those, you know, keep, keep the lights on sort of costs. Um, it's not meant to be able to grow your restaurant and build another location. That's not the idea of this program. Um, but we'll get more clarity kind of as um, SBA rolls this out. Again, happy to talk more about this. Uh, employee retention tax credit. This we talked about when I was with you guys last time when Ed was the host. Um, this program's ran through the IRS. Uh, so simply put, and I, we've talked about this last time, is that you're going to want to go through whoever does your bookkeeping, whether it's an accounting firm, you have somebody on, 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 on staff that does it, whoever does your, your, your taxes and, and uh, bookkeeping is who you're going to want to talk to here. And it's a tax credit. And what's nice about it um, is that it's refundable. So if you end up qualifying for more of a credit than your actual tax burden, the IRS will write you a check for the difference. Um, and a big change here, and that's in red, is this program now runs through the end of the year. It used to end at quarter two. In the tax credit, you'll take 70% on $10,000 of wages, so essentially a $7,000 tax credit per quarter. So you can qualify up to $28,000 per worker for that year. Um, another big change, uh, well, I guess this wasn't a change this past bill, but um, a, a big reason why I think this is going to be utilized more is that you can take a PPP loan and get this credit as well. So you can you can double up there. You can't use it to pay the same fund. You, know, you can't use PPP loan to pay your workers for, let's say, May, and then use the employer retention tax credit and pay your workers for May. You're going to want to spread that out. But you can get two different buckets of funding. You just can't use you know, uh, $2 to pay $1 of cost, if that makes sense. You've got to still have less than 500 people working for you. You have to have a 20% uh, decline in gross revenue. And there's also now, if you're a newer business, if you open sometime after February 15th of 2020, you now qualify on a limited basis as well. Um, if we have more questions, happy to come back to this. Shuttered venue um, operator program. Uh, this is similar to the restaurant program that it's ran through the SBA and this is a grant. Uh, to be very clear, this can't be, you know, you can't be a bar that brings in a guy to sing on Saturday nights. You, like, your, your main source of revenue has to be through ticket sales, you know, people seated to see some sort of event going on in your space. Um, so to qualify that even more, you have to have 70% of your earned income generated by live events. Again, less than 500 people working for you, 25% cut in gross revenue, and your grant is equal to the lesser of $10 million or 45% of your revenue in 2019. Um, and kind of like PPP and like the restaurant program, it's to keep you going. It's not to build another venue. It's not to add on anything like that. It's to cover your payroll, your rent, your utilities, masks, gloves, whatever you, you know, you might need to keep, you know, to keep your business rolling and keep it rolling at a, at a safe level. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I don't remember I said this at the start, but this is ran through the SBA. So it's, it's part of that grant grant program and not going through the private lender. Other changes. Um, if you remember from the first coronavirus package, which was almost passed know, a year ago now, 11 months, there was a mandate that if you were a small business, less than 500 people working for you, you had to provide paid leave for people who needed to quarantine or recover or take care of their children due to COVID-19. Uh, the mandate is now gone. It actually was it actually expired at the end of the year. However, the tax credit is back. So you don't have to provide this, but if you're willing to provide paid leave for workers that had a quarantine because they were exposed, they got COVID-19 and they're in the recovery process, they had to take care of a child because of a school closure, whatever the reason may be, or now a new um, 
benefit is if you pay them uh, their normal you know, salary and you give them time to go get vaccinated, you can get a tax credit for that as well. Um, unemployment um, insurance, the stuff that was plus up to the federal government, the extra $300 a week, uh, the um, um, unemployment that covers people who either had run out uh, of unemployment or didn't qualify for it before. Think if you're an independent contractor, uh, you know, something of that nature, that unemployment extension is running through uh, September 6th. Um, <clears throat> talk a little about here about state and local funding. Um, very, very quickly, um, it, it, it can be used to respond to COVID-19 emergencies and its economic effect, um, which, um, so you're gonna, anything that you use to provide service in your town and there's a reduced revenue, you can use the money to keep that going. So think of police, fire, that sort of nature. However, if you wanna make investments in water, sewer, or broadband, um, that's unrelated to COVID-19, you can use that as well. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. It's, it's mostly for backfilling money that's not coming in normally through tax, tax revenue and you're you know, experiencing a loss at your city, county, or whatever level of government. However, if you're gonna make an investment in water, sewer, broadband, you can do that with this money. Um, two things you cannot use it for. We're looking to get a little more uh, clarity on this. Uh, kind of the first point here is not really a Minnesota relevant thing, more looking at Illinois or you know New York. You can't backfill your, your, your uh, pension obligation. So you can't, you know, Illinois has a very well-known pro uh, problem of not being able to fulfill pensions that were uh, uh, promised to people years and years ago. You can't use it to backfill. And this is where we're looking for clarity is that you can't use it to offset tax cuts after March 3rd. Obviously, tax cut is a form of spending because you're taking money, uh, you know, taxpayer money and giving it back. You're spending the money at the state level. Uh, so they don't want you to use this money to just cut taxes. But we're looking for a little clarity on that. It's not exactly clear what, uh, you know, what, what, what's, what's meant there. So we're, we're looking at that uh, a little more closely. Minnesota, we just, I can just cover this briefly. Total, we're getting about almost $5 billion. Um, that is the state, county, and local level combined. Um, so I think the state itself is getting like two and a half billion and then the rest of that will be divided between counties and cities. Um, <clears throat> plus you get another $528 million for childcare, another almost $12 million for Head Start, almost one and a half billion dollars for K-12 education, 552 some million dollars for higher ed. Um, big pot of money. Uh, a lot of money has come to the state. We'll see how it's we'll see how it's utilized. Again, looking for more clarity on 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 this program in general. Um, I would expect most cities and towns to kind of do what they did when they got their first tranche of money. Um, but uh, I guess we'll see. Um, I think a lot of a lot of it's going to be left up to each locality. For more information, go to uschamber.com/coronavirus. We have all the guides there. I'm assuming we're working on the American. Uh, American uh, uh, recovery plan guide. Hopefully have it out sometime next week. Um, again, this is not the official document that you run through to, to, to apply to the program, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice way to, to shorten it up and you know, kind of get a more uh, wide scope view of, of what these programs are and, and um, if you qualify. Uh, before we move to questions, one thing I want to say about PPP um, probably heard a lot of banks are kind of shutting down PPP um, because of a lot of these fraud check issues that are really slowing down the application process. So some banks have stopped taking PPP loans. So there's a bill that passed the House and hopefully it passed the Senate next week to extend PPP another two months through the end of May and then giving the SBA and private lenders the entire month of June to kind of go through the fraud checks. There was a bunch of fraud checks that were added um, just because there was a decent amount of fraud from the first bill and they want to make sure that you know, these are looked at, you know, under a microscope more than they were before. So it slowed it down. And obviously we know the effectiveness of this program is, you know, it being fast and getting money out to people as they need it. Um, so it's good and unfortunate, good that they're doing a fraud check. Unfortunate that it's taking longer to get money out, but I think Congress recognizes that and we should see an extension coming on PPP. With that, let's, I'll stop sharing my screen and we can go to questions. I think a couple here have popped up in the chat. 
Yeah, I think if you want to start with, uh, there was the first question was restaurant revitali revitalization. Would a second draw PPP loan fund in 2021 be counted towards your 2020 revenue? If you got it in 2021, I, I, I would assume no. Um, I would, when, when you go through the process with the SBA, I would be very clear of all the PPP money you've taken. Um, I, I, I don't believe it's going to count in the form of revenue. However, if you have PPP money now, they're going to subtract it from whatever your grant would be qualified. So if you got a PPP loan, let's say of $200,000 and you qualify for $500,000 of that fund, you're going to get $300,000 instead. Got it. Um, but tax, you know, like the tax uh, issue with it, um, there's no tax effect at, at the federal level, still working to get that through the state. Okay. That could be part of that question too. Great. Um, and we have plenty of time for questions. So we have a couple more questions here, but if you have other questions, please throw them in the chat. Um, the next question is, so is the state and local funding from the ARP, is this what Dakota County has been talking about, the anticipated 84 million um, that they're anticipating? Yeah, if this is the month, if, if they've heard, I mean, I can go and look at the spreadsheet, the, the Senate put it out, but if you've been hearing uh, uh, 84 million, this is, this is where that money's coming from, it's coming from that bill. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the, the point. There's the federal programs that Ethan's been talking about here. There's money going directly to the state, there's money going directly to the county and there's money directly going to the cities. So you'll see it again at all levels. And um, so it's time for us to be in their business and finding out what they're gonna spend it on. Um, uh, I have a question here, Ethan, can you go over that first program again quickly? I assume that's the restaurant program? Yeah, so that the was restaurant- the one you did? Yeah, so the restaurant program, um, just to go over it again quickly, your dollar amount will be, you're going to look at your 2020 revenue and your, or your sales, your 2029 gro or 2020 gross sales, 2019 gross sales, you'll subtract them with the thinking that 2019 was higher. That will be your grant amount. Um, again, it's a grant. It'll come through the SBA. So you don't have to deal with the lender. There's no loan forgiveness process. So it's, 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 a, it's a pretty generous program through the SBA. That said, there's only about 28 billion or so in that fund. So once it is open, it's going to go fast. That's why I would still recommend going the PPP route um, because you can right now, and I'm assuming PPP will be extended. Let's just assume that it is not a guarantee, but let's just assume, let's say you've never taken a PPP loan yet. Well, you could apply for one, get your first one under the official, uh, under the first set of rules, yep. spend it. If you still have a 20% uh, reduction in uh, gross sales, you can apply to get a second one, qualify, spend it and get that restaurant fund. So everything is in the works right now. Um, what's also nice too, is if you're in the accommodation business, if you're a restaurant, a hotel, um, things of that nature, when you apply for PPP, you take your average monthly um, expenses and you multiply it by three and a half instead of two and a half. Um, so you'll be getting a little bit more money. So again, you're in the accommodation business on this call. Uh, if you want to just hang up right now and call your lender, I would I would recommend doing that because there's a lot of very generous programs for you. But I, I wouldn't wait around for that restaurant program. It's there. It's going to be online. But don't let that stop you from getting PPP. There's more money in PPP. Uh, they just added more money to it, and we weren't even close to running out. So. Uh, um, well, to your point on that, Ethan, the PPP money, you can get a check right now. I'm essentially right now. I mean, go through the process, whatever it is, but it's very quick. Even if it's round two for you, it's very quick. Our experience with the SBA is that this is a new grant program. We don't know how long it's going to take to go online before the application is open. Right. So get the PPP funds now and then backfill with the, the restaurant relief. Just for reference, that 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 shuttered venue program was mm -hmm. approved uh, right after Christmas time, and it's still not up and running. Right, exactly. So, uh, to, to kind of give you an idea, again, great program once it's going. I think the restaurant program will get going sooner. It's much simpler. Um, I, I, it's 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 very basic. Hopefully, it gets going sooner. The the shuttered venue program. I, I was listening to uh, an SBA call this morning. They they think the first part of April. I don't know. Um, <laughs> We'll but I, I'm always going for the money that's available now. 
<laughs> exactly. And on that note, we have a question here about the best avenue for struggling hotels. I find it interesting. Uh, we understand why there's so much focus on restaurants and venues, but we also know that the recovery for hotels is just as long, if not longer. Is there anything specifically for them in this package? There is not anything specific besides the getting a little bit more out of PPP. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a great argument to be made that there could be a, ho a hotel slash bed and breakfast, uh, some sort of revitalization program easily. <laughs> you know, you can make an argument for that because that is going to be more long term. You know, you can't take hotel service for takeout. Um, but the PPP, again, I'm going to stress that, that three and a half uh, uh, talk to your bookkeeper about the uh, um, employee retention tax credit. Um, we qualify for that. That's nice because it's not a forgiveness process. Once you qualify for the credit, you'll get it. Um, there's also traditional SBA loans. Now those are like any other loan you'd get, you'd get the loan. And have it back. I'd say that's more of a last process just because you'll have to pay it back. But no, um, unfortunately, there's no hotel revitalization program, but I would highly recommend PPP and looking at that tax credit, considering that tax credit now goes through the entire year. Um, another, uh, just one other caveat on the employee retention credit. Mm -hmm. you, if you haven't done that yet, you do it through either your payroll company, your accountant, somebody like that, they should know what to do if you haven't done it yet. Make sure they file it electronically. I will just tell you because this was the only thing available to us as chambers in 2020. And so we applied for it and something glitched up with our quarter two submission and they had to submit it by paper. And we found out that paper filings at the IRS are behind by eight to 10 months. So we received our quarter three because we filed it electronically, but we have not yet received our quarter two from 2020. So just note to self, file electronically. And then the other question is, and you may or may not know this, Ethan, but in this rescue plan, are there funds to staff the IRS and the SBA to get this stuff done? Because they keep pouring stuff on their plates. But I mean, the IRS is flat out, they, they just can't process stuff. Right. Great question. I have not heard specifically if there's money for them to quickly expand workforce. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I heard yesterday a stat that the SBA has issued more loans in the last six months than in their whole entire 60 years of existence. So, yeah, it's a it's it's a big drop on an otherwise uh, slow moving government program. Exactly. <laughs> there's no doubt. Well, I think um, what I'm hearing is we will be having some conversations with our city, county, and, and state officials about the hotels and any other industries that aren't getting specific relief through this because there might be something they can do. And you're starting to hear very creative things around the world about providing incentives for people to travel and come to your community. So we might be looking at that too. Um, any, I, I don't see any other questions in the chat right now. I don't think I missed anything. I see um, one from Ann about oh. the hotel restaurant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you're like the the green mill that's attached to the Holiday Inn, yeah, yeah, you would qualify. Now, I think if the question would be, though, if you're like at a Hilton, say you, you know, your restaurant that's ran by Hilton inside a Hilton Garden Inn, like you're just their food processing service, I, I don't know if that would qualify. I think you have to be a separate restaurant entity. Again, that'll That'll be come out with more guidance when I think of country clubs and shooting clubs and other places that offer food, but they also require a membership. Right. So yeah, those are the those those, those are the questions that are that'll come up. But but if you're at a separate restaurant that happens to just lease space from a Holiday Inn or whatever, yeah, you would yeah, definitely qualify. Well, Ethan, I think in the past you've been willing to share your PowerPoint with us so we can yes. get it out. So we will send a follow up with the link to this video, the PowerPoint as well as the link that um, that Ethan shared to the US Chamber where they have all their guidance because I assume there's PPP forgiveness guidance out there already. I assume you'll be producing a guidebook on all of this stuff that'll probably be out next week sometime. So we'll get this out to everybody. Um, thank you so much for taking the time at the drop of the hat. We called Ethan on Tuesday and said, what are you doing on Friday for lunch? And he, <laughs> he cleared his schedule for us because we know this information is 
sometimes hard to come by and we appreciate the US Chamber always being a great resource for that. Um, thank you again to our sponsor this quarter, XL Energy. And thanks so much to my partners in crime at the Apple Valley, uh, Lakeville, Hastings and River Heights Chamber. So again, Jennifer Hermoning with the Burnsville Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us today and get out and enjoy some of the sunshine. We'll uh, follow up with more information when we get it. Thanks, Ethan. Thank you. Thanks for having me.